If you've been following Star Citizen for a while, it can be frustrating when the latest, greatest new ship that comes out has all these new systems, a huge price tag, and still won't be released for years. It seems like everything new needs a crew or is a support ship for a military assault or a large-scale industrial titan. But then we got a surprise, the Drake Cutter. And it provides the best, most complete introduction to Star Citizen for the new player and is the best starter ship in the game. First things first, just look at the thing. The cutter is visually stunning in a dystopian landfill Mad Max kind of way. The Drake ethos is functional and cheap, and this ship lives that ethos perfectly. The exposed rivets, external piping, delicate asymmetry, the goals give the impression that everything exists on this craft for a reason and isn't messy about it. Except for maybe some uh, smoke coming out of that fan. But just look at all the detail. This isn't a polished chrome stone from Origin. All the details are there to study and question and wonder about. Even the overall shape, let's face it, is a flying box with engines strapped to the sides, which is charming in its earnestness. Just looking at it, you know the cutter is gonna help you out when you need it. And it'll indeed help, because it is packed with lots of things you need, many of which you won't even find on other ships in this price range. Uh, more on price later. Entering from the rear, there's a spot for four SCU of cargo. This is common for starter ships. What other ships don't have is this huge gaping maw of a rear cargo space. It's cavernous enough to fit in an STV, Mule, Knox. I've even seen a rock hanging out of the back of one. And somewhere in here is the quantum fuel tank, which is large enough at 6,000 units that you'll probably never have to stop for gas. That's like 10 times the usual starter ship amount. In traditional flight, I wouldn't call the cutter fast, but the maneuvering thrusters are surprisingly strong and give the ship remarkable agility. It has a storage locker, in addition to its local inventory, a bed, a bathroom, and an unusual weapon rack. See, most weapon racks, even on far more expensive ships, can hold uh, pistol size and rifle size personal weapons, but you rarely see the ability to store something big like a rocket launcher or rail gun in these things. It's exciting that the production pipeline now results in ships that are focused on gameplay that we have now and not inventing mechanics or lore with each new model. The cutter was built for what we have in the game now, excepting a couple little mechanics that will affect all ships, like fixing components or using the bathroom. It's important not to have to talk about what a ship will be and focus on what it does right now instead. Since the cutter has an interior, you can do delivery missions with ease and go hand mining and stack those mineral boxes in the hold. Deploying probes or boxes is similarly easy. When you're doing bunker missions, the cutter has a space to bring one and two SCU boxes for storing all your loot, as well as the generous local and storage inventory. It's small enough to fly through those caves with no issue. The massive amount of stowage is gonna come in really handy for cramming an insane number of boxes at the next jump town or xenothreat, or stacking bodies to bring to a hospital, depending on how your day goes. And speaking of bodies, you can easily use the cutter as a dropship or to deploy an STV-based rapid response team from uh, orbit onto a point. As to bounty hunting and PvP, that brings me to the caveats. Look, nobody is expecting the cutter to do VHRTs, although I'm sure a skilled pilot could pull it off. Uh, personally, I feel comfortable up to the MRT level in this. In Star Citizen right now, combat makes up a large portion of missions for players, from bounty hunting to service beacons to criminal missions. The biggest issue for the cutter is it comes with two size 1 gimbaled on size 2 hardpoints. This means you can install two fixed size 2 weapons on it, which I would highly recommend, but for how this ship flies and with only one small shield, it's just not enough firepower. Now there are other ships limited to two size 2 hardpoints, like the C8 and C8R Pisces, or even the Talon Shrike. But other starter ships in this class, like the Aurora with its four size 1 weapons, or the 100 series with its two size 3 weapons, dish out a little over 25% more damage. That's not nothing if you're looking to keep the cutter as your main ship. Another thing to consider is that the cutter cannot be spawned on a small pad, like the ones found at Outposts. This comes in really handy if you find yourself stranded on a planet or need to store some contraband on a moon for some reason. Right now for IAE, the cutter, with game package, is a true deal at $45. And that's why, despite my caveats, the cutter is the best starter ship in the game. 
there is no other ship that can compete with that price point. Uh, for those who don't know, you can buy ships for real money to help fund the game, but you also need a game package to run the client, and not every ship comes with one. It's usually a $15 premium over the cost of the starter ship, and this package basically gives it to you for free. It's an incredible deal for anyone wanting to get into Star Citizen. The other $45 starter packs are the Aurora MR, which doesn't have a large hold, and the Mustang Alpha, which doesn't have a bed. The next step up from that is $60 bucks for an Anvil Pisces, and with $15 to upgrade the cutter, you'd have much better options. Once you get your feet under you and use your cutter to purchase some ships using in-game currency, especially cargo-focused or combat-focused ships, you don't have to let it gather dust. Using a cross-chassis upgrade, you can pay extra cash to upgrade your cutter into another ship if you want something more combat-focused or utility-focused. Here's what I recommend. The Origin 100i has basically the same equipment as the cutter, but with two size 3 weapons and an aerodynamic shape that makes it really fast, especially in atmosphere. And you can spawn it on a small pad, which is super handy. You can upgrade to this for $5. The Avenger Titan has twice as many shields and almost four times the firepower of the cutter using one size 4 and two size 3 weapons. It still has a hold and a bed. You can upgrade to this for $10. And to complete the circle, you can upgrade the cutter to its bigger brother, the Cutlass Black, for $55. It does everything bigger and better. You can haul a rock miner in the back, pretty much anything. It's the ultimate do anything, go anywhere ship. You may be thinking to yourself, damn, I missed IE and the free fly, but I really want to fly that cutter, or damn, $45 is pretty cheap, but I'd love to spend that money on upgrading my ship instead. Well, you are in luck, because I'm giving away a Drake cutter with game package. My first giveaway. All you have to do is be a subscriber, like this video, and comment, and you'll be entered to win. I'll choose the winning comment with a randomizer and contact them directly. Please don't fall for any scams. I won't post a link or anything like that. Good luck to all that enter and fly dangerously.